Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about everything wrong with NBA 2K19. Now before we get into it, let me just explain to you, I'm not one of those people that is just negative and hates the game every single year. I actually think NBA 2K19 is a very good game. I enjoyed playing it all year, I had fun, and there's a lot of things right with it, but that doesn't exclude the, the fact that we need to criticize things that could be improved for NBA 2K20. So today I wanna talk about the main biggest things wrong with NBA 2K19. Now I might miss a few, so there's a comment section down below. Please feel free to leave your input, leave your opinion. This is my opinion, let's get right into it. Please drop a like on the video. If you guys are looking for a stacked NBA 2K or Fortnite account, make sure you go to sportstmb.com. That's right, no more Twitter. He has an official business website, sportstmb.com. There you'll be able to view all the accounts, see the prices, and get what you need. The link is in the description. Go click it and see what he has to offer. The first thing I want to talk about is archetypes. Now, archetypes are something that the community is pretty divided on. Some people love them, some people hate them, some people think it should go back to 2K16 where it was inside, outside, and balanced. Some people think archetypes just need to be tweaked. I don't mind either way. My biggest thing with archetypes is we need to find a way to have a bigger skill gap. Certain archetypes are complete bailout builds, meaning that a lesser skilled player can still be like extremely effective on a certain archetype just because that archetype is so overpowered we need to find a way to make it more balanced whether we keep the archetypes or you know go to 2k16 style or find a new kind of system one way or another we have to find a way to have a bigger skill gap in nba 2k20 the next thing i want to talk about is park events now park events are a big w this year they were they had so many different events they were a lot of them were double rep and it was just it was refreshing to have so many different events. Every weekend there was new things going on, but the reason why this is on here is because these events are able to be controlled by booters and delayers and hackers. And it went from a kind of a competitive thing for everyone in the community to enjoy into a thing that it was like only super duper nerd tryhards that are booting people offline and stuff had a chance to win. If we can sort it out to the point that we get rid of the fact that people are able to boot people offline and delay the servers and lag everyone out, and we got it to the point where it was actually meant to be, where people could just go into the event and compete and try to win, you know, VC or you know, play for double rep or earn virtual clothes or whatever, the, the, you know, whatever you could earn from that park event. If we get rid of the booters and the hackers and all that, the park events would be a huge W in NBA 2K20. The next thing we're going to talk about is microtransactions. We kind of talk about it every year for 2K, but again, I mean, you buy the game, you spend, you know, whatever it is, $60 or whatever it is in whatever country you're from, but then you have to spend additional money just to get your, even just your first player to get him up to a point where he can compete on the park. Obviously, this is a big turnoff for new players. You know, they buy the game, getting ready to play. We're going to go on the park and you realize, wait, I can't even upgrade my guy to be competitive. I'm out there with a 60 overall, unless I'm willing to spend even more money to upgrade my player. The next thing is you can't get games on NBA 2K19. I don't know if we need to do away with the neighborhood and just have a separate park so that everyone in that server is looking for games, but there's times on 2K that if you're not a YouTuber or a streamer, it's really difficult to get back-to-back -back games. You could be on the park for an hour and only play two or three games. It's very, very frustrating for players that you know just want to get on the game and hoop but people are so worried about their win percentage or you know they don't want to run with certain people i mean honestly i'm even okay with just doing away with park records like who cares what your park record is go out there and hoop or if you want to have a park record make it so nobody can see it only you can see your own record so that you know those people that want to grind for a really good record can do it but then everybody else you know you could just go out there and hoop like the game was intended to be as opposed to everyone running from games and ducking games and you know all that stuff that you have to deal with in nba 2k19 hopefully we find a way to make it better in 2k20 now one of my biggest pet peeves in nba 2k19 is the fact that every archetype can shoot consistent three pointers let me give you an example and explain why this is such a big problem in the game for example a lockdown obviously their main purpose is to be really great defensively they have like a 50 something three pointer depending on how you make the build they can shoot consistent green three-pointers in NBA 2K19. Now, the reason this is game-breaking is because a build that is not intended to shoot consistent three-pointers, obviously with a 50-something three-point rating, that's not that great, 
is out there shooting consistent greens, which now allows teams to run completely unrealistic toxic lineups. For example, a team might play three on three and they'll run two lockdowns and a rim protector. Now, on the surface, you would think that's easy to guard, but it's not because these builds are extremely athletic. They can get to the basket and dunk. So you say, just play back and stand in the paint. But guess what? These builds can now shoot top of the key three pointers and green consistently, depending on the jump shot that they put on. Without ranting about this for 20 minutes, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Let's move on. Let's talk about the imbalance of getting takeover, depending on your archetype. So some builds, it's extremely easy to get takeover and some builds, it's much more difficult. Let me give you an example. A playmaker needs to have five or six either baskets or assists to get their takeover. Not too bad, pretty balanced for a part game. Compare that to a stretch big who only needs to make three three-pointers to get their takeover. That's a big imbalance. A lot more can go wrong on five or six possessions trying to get takeover as opposed to only three possessions to make three three-pointers. We got to find a way to balance it out if we're going to keep takeover in the game so that certain archetypes don't get their takeover much quicker than others. Staying on the topic of takeover, let's talk about the most overpowered takeover in the game. Post score takeover. Now I understand when an NBA player gets, you know, hot or they're in the zone, they're extremely tough to stop. But when it gets to the point in the game where the takeover is giving you animations that are completely unguardable, I think it becomes a problem in terms of balance. Post score takeover this year doesn't only allow you to score very easily, but it gives you animations that are unguardable. With the simple spin of a stick, you can throw your opponent off the court, giving you an easy dunk or an easy layup, and there's nothing that person can do about it. I'm not saying remove takeover completely, but I think we can all agree with certain archetypes, an example being post scores, we have to tweak that takeover just a bit so at least you have a chance to stop them. The next one I'm going to talk about is a gameplay glitch that has been in the game for several years now. It always changes slightly, but the idea stays the same. Now, this is known as the off-ball cheese or the D-pad glitch or whatever you want to call it, but basically it allows any archetype to change direction on the stop of a dime off-ball. Now, the reason this messes with the balance of the game is because slow builds, for example, a stretch big, who would be very slow changing directions and easy to guard, now can change directions and go left, right, left, right, and then sprint into the, you know, sprint into space, catch the ball and shoot. It would be very easy to guard, but they can change directions on the stop of a dime with this glitch. If they find a way in NBA 2K20 to not allow this type of movement, it would make these slower shooting builds a lot easier to guard and not as overpowered on the twos or the threes in the park. The next gameplay glitch I want to talk about is the inbounds glitch or the LT glitch or the L2 glitch, whatever you want to call it. But basically on the inbounds, the person who is not inbounding the ball on the twos court will step between the defender and the inbounder hold the L2 or the LT button. As soon as you pass it in, he'll start to back that person down, throw it back to the person who inbounded it, they'll catch and they'll shoot. It's very difficult to guard. It's not realistic at all because in real life it would never happen like that. And it causes a lot of problems because basically it gives the person a wide open shot every time on the twos court. Now this is possible even not on the inbounds, but it's really only possible because of the D-pad or the off ball glitch. Basically while you're D-padding left, right, left, right, your teammate who has the ball is going to L2 and try to try to get your defender stuck. You're D-padding back and forth. Once you see your defender get stuck, you sprint into space. He passes it to you. You shoot it wide open. It's extremely broken, takes very little skill, and needs to be fixed for NBA 2K20. Let's talk about the post game for a second. The post game in NBA 2K19 is actually pretty solid. There's just a few things wrong with it. Obviously, the post takeover, we already talked about that. But there's a few glitches. For example, the post speed boost. The post speed boost is basically while you're posting up, no matter what weight you are, no matter what build you are, you can basically speed boost to the basket. Some people do this, they'll speed boost to the left, speed boost to the right, speed boost to the left. It's just completely unrealistic and your player moves much faster than the game intends. There's also a little push animation you can do in the paint, which again, it's not specific for post scores, but you have to be posting up to do it. And basically you just shove your guy back and then you can go up for a layup or a dunk, not intended to be in the game. If you remove those, and obviously the post takeover being super overpowered, if you remove all that stuff, the post game is actually pretty solid in 2K19 and it does take some skill to actually be able to score. But the fact that these glitches and then obviously, like I said, the takeover has a few animations that are super overpowered. You know, you add those in, then all of a sudden post scores, you know, everyone's talking about how broken they are and, and they take no skill and stuff like that. If you remove those or, or tweak them to the point that they're not, you know, game breaking, I think the post game is actually very, very promising. 
Let's shift gears and talk about dribbling. So there's two things I want to address. The first thing is the person defending the dribbler. This year, if you push up on the right stick and you play what we call hands up defense, it makes it almost impossible for the person to get an ankle breaker on you. And that really makes no sense. I mean, why would it make it harder for them to break your ankles because you're playing hand, you know, you're playing with your hands up? That in, if you think about it in real life, that like that does not, <laughs> that's not how it works. So I think we need to address that definitely. And the next thing I want to talk about is the dribble glitch. Basically, we all know if you hold the left trigger, that's to kind of protect your dribble, kind of put you in a post up animation, but you're using your body to protect the ball. That's intended to be there. But the problem is. Once you start comboing up, like, you know, you do a crossover between the legs, behind the back, a spin move, whatever. If you're holding LT or L2 while you're doing those combos, it, you can't get the ball stolen. It, it's what these ball handlers would call a dribble glitch because, you know, they're just, you say, oh, I'm dribble glitching. He's not going to steal it from me because it's impossible to steal it. That's obviously not intended to be there. And it's something we need to address. Now, like I said, I think NBA 2K19 is a really good game. I enjoyed playing it all year and I'm excited for what 2K20 has to offer. Now, obviously we could have made this video drag out for 20, 30, 40 minutes, adding in small little problems here and there, but my goal was just to address the main points, the main things that we need to tweak going into 2K20 to make the best game possible. So like I said earlier in the video, if you think I missed something, feel free to comment it down below. Please drop a like on the video. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm out. Peace.